I am John Burbank from Passport Capital at the Beyond Blocks conference in Tokyo. Thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> so you, uh, you have a very well documented history um, of being an investor and now a cryptocurrency investor. So my first question for you is, what inspired you to be an investor? Or uh, what inspired you to become an investor? An basically? investor? Yeah. Um, it, overall, in general. What it was was, I was in business school, I realized that investing was a good way of learning about the world, how the world really was. Uh, and it was a world that I didn't know. And that really is what got my interest. Yeah. And it's definitely the case. Yeah, and you went to Stanford. I right? did, Stanford Business School. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, so, and then now more about uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you started investing in them a few years back. Um, what got you into cryptocurrency and why? Uh, it was really because I've been investing in startups for the last 10 years, uh, being in San Francisco. And so I like investing in startups because I like uh, someone's view of the world that's very different you know, than it is today. And a startup won't really hit its stride for five to 10 years. Yeah. So I like, that. I like investing in, in that kind of uh, 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 situation. Uh, and it was doing that that got me involved in one that uh, became a, a crypto uh, company yeah. as in 2013, and that, then I started tracking uh, Bitcoin. Okay, what, what company was that? Uh, it, was, uh, it was actually uh, uh, DCG that uh, I think uh, transitioned from a, a different company that was trying to market secondary uh, pr uh, private uh, uh, shares. I see. I see. So in your talk um, over here at Beyond Blocks, uh, you made a reference to institutional investors looking at cryptocurrencies as if how individuals used to look at autonomous driving or uh, right. genome research five or 10 years ago. Right. Um, I found that really, really interesting. So if you could kind of just uh, summarize what you meant by that again. Sure. So um, I I'm a macro investor and so I try to understand trends and secular paths, and often you find conclusions that are very surprising. But it's hard to, with technology, it's hard to understand where you're going to get to if, if you don't understand technology, which I don't. I'm not a technologist. But I do understand that constantly the future is way different than people expect. And even just five years from now, if you just go back every five years in financial markets, the last 20, 25 years, and ask yourself, you know, would the world be what, what, you know, what did I think of the world versus five years later? It's always very, very different. And so, so I've gotten used to believing, oh my gosh, right now is mispriced for five years from now. And so the question is, how is right now mispriced? For, what structural reason is it going to be very different? And the structural reason I think right now is that technologies are now changing the biggest sectors in the world. And it's happening in every big sector, because they really didn't change that much, but I, I list all these different ways they are. Yeah. And so I think blockchain and crypto is changing finance. And finance is not immune to technological change, but it's, um, it's way bigger than the change from floor trading to electronic trading, yeah. right? And we got efficiencies and liquidity, but this is something actually harder to get your mind around because it's so wrapped in technology yeah. and the culture's so different too, yeah. right? Non-centralized. Yeah. So I don't see why finance is, is, uh, is, is not going to allow this to, to happen, particularly if it's more efficient. Now none of these technologies in all these industries are actually more efficient now than, because they're all in beta, right? Everything's in beta. But the point of this, when you invest in a small company, a startup, they're all in beta. They're not ready for, you know, they're not cash flow positive, they're not fully formed. So I'd say um, this is just this version of, of finance and, and what will happen is it's, it's going to become part of commerce. Part of commerce is as big a part of your your world as any. Yeah, makes sense. There's a lot to learn from what you just said. Thank you very much for that. Uh, my next question, so uh, as an investor, what are if you could maybe name the top three things or three of the more important things you look at when making an investment decision in blockchain? 
Well, um, the three areas that I've that I I guess care about um, that I'm focused on is number one, I care about how security tokens are going to be um, traded, uh, where, how they're going to be created, um, you know what, who is going to do that. I want to understand how that's going to happen because I think security tokens is going to be such a big part of this ecosystem. Second is um, I'm really interested in the infrastructure to make this institutional products. And what I'm finding is a lot of really smart, successful uh, financial tech people are now looking at this and saying they, they're, they're, they'd prefer to be in this world than the world, the traditional world. And so I'm really interested in investing and being following what they're doing because I think they're going to make massive improvements. Um, third is um, uh, I'm not a huge ICO buyer, um, but I'm looking for really profound, you know, profoundly meaningful ones, just like I look for profoundly meaningful early stage companies. Um, but that's, that's actually the third, of, that's the third on my list. The other two, to me, are more important and, more, and, and uh, easier for me to, to be predictive because security tokens are going to happen. Uh, the infrastructure has to be created. To, you know, if you, if you, you can't actually believe in, uh, if you believe in an ICO, you have to believe in the infrastructure to support it, yeah. you know, institutionally. Um, and so that's how I'm thinking about this. There are, what I'm also finding is that you, you can literally not pay attention to anything but, but high quality things and be just fine. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to actually put your time into anything that you don't think is really high quality. And, uh, and so I'm trying to spend my time in places that I'm, I think are inevitable, are going to happen, are going to be bigger than people think, um, and that's how I'd rank it. That's pretty cool. Um, so a lot of people say 2018 will be the year where the winners will be separated from the losers, especially in the blockchain space. Uh, a lot of more high quality product projects will come out. Uh, what do you think from an in investment perspective is a trend that the market will follow or what, what or the direction the market will take? Well, everything in, is in correlating together, you know, so it's, I guess, the, I guess, yeah, I mean, there, there are price, there will be price signals where some things outperform, but I think they're all going to move together. Um, I think if you have, when you have regulatory clarity about utility tokens versus security tokens, then I guess there will be a lot of there could be a lot of casualties, right? Um, but in, in general, it's really rare for tech companies that are not uh, run by high quality people with high quality technology that that win. And so I assume it's the same with ICOs. And so I guess I would just accept that's a premise that will happen, whether you know the separation happens this year or next, I don't know. I don't know. Right now I'd say that you shouldn't fool yourself by feeling you you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna rise if you're in the high quality ones and you'll avoid all the problems in the other ones because liquidity is just taking everything down right now. So you're saying the playing field is pretty much open? The playing field is definitely open, although um, I guess I'd say every quarter that goes by feels like a year in, in crypto. I, I, and I so, yeah. so I guess we've got three more years ahead of us <laughs> in 2018. Right. So that's a long time. Thank you very much for your okay. time. Okay, thanks. Thank you.